Welcome. Don't let my sultry and mysterious voice startle you. For hundreds, nay thousands, nay, nay, nay tens of thousands of years, people have come to me in search of what they desire most. On paper, this week's most noteworthy release, The Cave, looks like a slam dunk. Pairing veteran adventure game designer Ron Gilbert with the talented folks at Double Fine, The Cave is a 2D puzzle platformer unlike any other as it shuns the physics-based puzzles typical of the genre in favor of a more traditional point-and-click adventure style, which is to say that despite its appearance, The Cave is much less reminiscent of games like Trine than it is of classic adventure titles like The Secret of Monkey Island. Now, The Cave isn't perfect and it does suffer from some noteworthy technical issues, but it also represents one of the most inventive, engaging, and downright funny games I've played in recent memory, and fans of the genre who don't mind tech some occasionally beguiling puzzles should definitely check it out. Few find what they are looking for, even fewer ever leave. Welcome to the cave. That's me, the cave. Yes, yes, I'm a talking cave. Don't laugh, it makes dating hell. The title of the cave refers not only to the game's setting, but also to one of its central characters, a sentient talking cave that narrates the entire story of our game with varying degrees of snark. The game begins when the cave itself introduces us to the seven unique playable characters, of which we will have to assemble a group of three of our choosing that will accompany each other on the subsequent adventure. What's really interesting is that although the game doesn't highlight the importance of this decision, the characters you choose to take will have a monumental impact on the experience you have in a very meaningful way. Not only does every character have a unique backstory, special ability, and motive for spelunking in the first place, but indeed every character has their own unique level later in the game, specifically designed for that individual avatar and their special ability. What this means is that with hundreds of possible permutations for who makes up your group, it's almost a certainty that your first playthrough will be unique with respect to the levels and puzzles you come across compared to almost everyone else's. Discovering that this seemingly minor early game decision actually vastly changes the game further down the road was one of the biggest surprises of the cave for me, and the fact that there's so much potential variety from one game to the next is very, very cool. Once you've selected your three characters and begun your journey deeper into the cave, you'll soon begin to discover that this is a very novel kind of puzzle platformer. Although most of the recent favorites in the genre, like the Trine franchise for example, revolve around using objects in the environment to solve physics-based puzzles, the cave is instead grounded in much more traditional point-and-click adventure tropes with puzzles typically requiring clever usage of items found in your surroundings in order to progress. Unlike most adventure games, however, the cave does lack an inventory system, and this means that the puzzles are usually somewhat simpler than is typical of the genre, as they never require combining every single item in your backpack to come up with some unfathomable contraption necessary to proceed. Although this does probably make the game a little bit easier, the lack of an inventory system also keeps the game moving at a brisk pace, and makes the game somewhat more accessible for people like me who oftentimes find themselves alienated by the somewhat obtuse nature of puzzles endemic to many other adventure games. In contrast, the puzzles in the cave are almost always logical, and I was frustrated only rarely on my first playthrough of the game. Speaking of which, the cave is designed in such a way that multiple playthroughs are not only rewarding, but pretty much downright necessary if you want to experience the game in its entirety. The game is informally divided into two types of levels, character-specific levels, which change depending on the composition of your party, and the general levels of the cave, which everyone will play regardless of the characters that they took. Although the universal levels repeat themselves across every adventure, each of the character-specific levels offers a unique art style and atmosphere, as well as puzzles that differ wildly from one another. The Hillbilly's quest, for example, revolves around his collecting tokens at a carnival so he can win a stuffed animal to give to his true love, whereas the Scientist's quest requires her to assemble and launch a nuclear missile which, according to the game, results in the deaths of 100 million people, give or take a million or two. These unique levels are easily the most fun areas of the game, which unfortunately makes it a bit of a drag that the somewhat less interesting cave levels are the ones repeated every time you start a new game. But with each adventure only taking between two or three hours, there's a lot of incentive for eager players to jump back into the game with new characters to see the levels they missed on their first time around. Beyond just seeing all of the levels and puzzles, most players will want to play through the game a second time to experience all of the excellent dialogue and voiceover work in the game. The cave is populated with a variety of zany characters, and all of them are at least decently funny in their own right, thanks to both the polished voice work and the amusing writing. Although much of the dialogue and narration is repeated on each subsequent adventure, the fact that it's genuinely funny most of the time at least makes it tolerable to hear over and over again. Please, not another chivalrous knight trying to win my love through misguided feats of bravery or bribery. I really need to talk to my father about this. 
Now, although I've gushed a little bit over the game so far, it's important to note that there are some legitimate problems with the cave that do hamper the experience on an appreciable level. I've been playing the Xbox 360 version, and the biggest problem by far is that the game has consistent and very noticeable slowdown that shows up frequently throughout the game. Although it doesn't ruin the experience, it is jarring and somewhat surprising, given that the game, although good looking, is pretty visually simplistic. I've also encountered a few unfortunate glitches, the most common of which involves a character becoming stuck between two objects. Although I did on one occasion have a vital quest object simply disappear from the screen, which required reloading yeah, my save in order to fix it. Finally, the controls oftentimes leave a little bit to be desired, and although the game is very light on platforming sections, sometimes even simply traversing the environment can be a bit tricky thanks to the somewhat wonky way that the characters jump and snap onto nearby ledges. However, in spite of its surprising technical faults, The Cave is still an incredibly interesting game that is much more dense and layered than it might initially appear on first glance. With its clever puzzles and novel approach to puzzle platforming, it's an easy game to recommend to fans of classic adventure titles, while its more accessible and simplified interface should make it appealing for other players as well. While The Cave does fall short of being a true masterpiece, it packs in more than enough enjoyment to justify its price tag and stand out as being one of the best downloadable titles in recent memory.